Hey y'all, in this video, we're going to take a deep dive into the Vectric Tool database. Now this deep dive came as a result of your comments and requests in live Q&A number 61. Now if you don't know what I'm talking about, every Sunday, right here on my YouTube channel, I host a live Q&A session where we discuss the topics brought up in the video that was released that Sunday morning. So I hope you'll join us this afternoon for live Q&A number 62 right here on my YouTube channel. And I've put a link to that live Q&A session down in the description box of this video. So let's go ahead and get into the Vectric Tool database. Now, before we can do anything, we have to have a file open out here. And that's because we can't access the menus that we need to access to get into the database. So I can either use a recently opened file or I can create a new file. And since we're not actually doing any design work or calculating any tool paths, none of these settings matter at all. So I'll just accept whatever's in there and we'll click OK. Now there are two ways of getting into the tool database. The first is to come up here to the tool paths menu and then right down here at the bottom I have tool database. I can click that and the database opens up. The other way is over here in the tool paths tab. I can come to this icon right here display tool database click that and my tool database opens up. What we're going to discuss today applies to the tool database that was changed dramatically starting with version 10. I have already done several tool database videos on the older versions 9.5 and earlier and I'll put a link to the playlist of all of those tool database videos in a card up here right about now. And you can just click on that link and it'll open up the playlist for all of the tool database videos I've done previous to this one. Some of the new features that were incorporated in version 10.5 and later have caused them to change the layout of the database a little bit and it's broken down into four main sections. Up here we have the machine selection, material selection, and an area called online. Off to the left we have the familiar Windows type tree menu that lists all of our tools in various categories and groups. Out here we have the tool settings or group settings. Now when this first opened up, it opened up in the Imperial tools because that's the first on the list alphabetically. We have Imperial, and we have Metric. I don't use Metric tools, so I have that tool group collapsed. I can access it by clicking on the little plus sign over here and it opens up all of the metric tools. And I can open up NMIL's ball nose V bits the same way, just clicking that little plus sign. I can collapse it by clicking on the minus sign. Now, down below in the fourth panel, we have some administrative tools. I can add a new tool under the selected tool group. I can add a whole new group. If I were to decide I have enough diamond drag bits, for example, I could set up a new group called diamond drag bits and start adding diamond drag bits with various angled tips on them. Here I can copy a tool or an entire group. Over here I can import a tool database I can import an entire database or just one tool file. If I've downloaded a tool profile from a manufacturer's website, 
that I want to bring into this database, this is the icon that I would click. I would add that tool here. And here I can export a tool or group or an entire database. So those are the main sections of the tool database. And to get started, we'll begin up here at the top. I'm not going to start at the left. I'm going to come way over here to the right at first. And we see that we have an area called machine. And right now I have Gatton CNC because that's the only CNC machine I have. So that's the only one I use. And you can see the arrow here. This is a drop down menu. If I had more than one machine listed here, I could select which machine. I wanted to calculate these toolpaths for. Now the way I set up this machine was with this icon over here. It looks like a notepad with a pencil on it. I click that icon and that opens up the machine management dialog box here. Now right now we're looking at the machine I have, the active machine that I'm using, and that is the Gatton CNC. Up here I have the name, that is the display name, that's the name that's going to appear here and right here. Under Make, I have Gatton CNC, there is no model. I have put down Mach 3 as my controller and the type of file it outputs is G-code. I've selected my unit of measure to be inches because I work with the Imperial system. And this is my cutting capacity for this machine. I have a 51 inch width in X and a 34 inch height in Y. My machine does support a rotary axis. However, it does not support automatic tool change and it does not have a laser. Now, right now, this is the only CNC router I have. If I were to add another machine, let's say I added a bigger or smaller machine, I would come up to this plus sign right here, and this would add a machine to the database, then activate it. And it would open up a form identical to this. I would name the machine, again, this being the display name that's going to appear here and here. Then I would enter the make the model, the controller, its cutting capacity, whether it supports a rotary axis, has a tool changer, laser head, then click apply, then click OK. If I wanted to copy this machine, let's say I built a second Gatton CNC with a different cutting capacity that didn't support a rotary axis, I would copy this one choose another display name, enter the difference in width, uncheck supports rotary, click apply and OK, then I would have a second machine here. If I sold my Gatton CNC, I could remove this machine from the database by just clicking this garbage can icon right here and it would remove this machine from my database. This is how you set the machine that you're using. This is how you add a machine to the tool database. This is how you eliminate a machine from the database. I'm going to click cancel here. It's all done through this icon right here. The online section will allow you to upload your current tool database to the cloud through your Vectric V and Company portal account. You must be logged in to your VN company account to do this. If you're not logged in, it will not upload your database to the cloud. So we'd come over here to the Vectric website and right here is the link to log in to your VN Co account. So we'll click on that and I will log in to my account. Now that I'm signed in, I can minimize that and I can upload this current tool database to the cloud 
by clicking this button right here with the upload arrow. I'm not going to do that. I've already done it. My database is current on the cloud. If I should install Aspire on a separate computer, like my laptop, for example, I could install it, then open up the tool database in that version of Aspire, then come right here and download the database that I have stored on the portal. That's one way of backing up your tool database that is easy to keep updated. When you make a change, just click the button, it uploads the database after you've saved it, of course, and that is the database that is stored on the cloud. That's one way of backing up your database. Now I'm going to hit cancel and close this for just a minute to show you a second way of backing up your database. So we'll hit cancel. I'll come up here to the file menu and I'll click on open application data folder. When I do that, it opens up the folder that Aspire or vCarve version 10.5, the current version I'm using, this is where it stores all of the data that the program uses. And you see here we've got bitmap textures and gadgets, etc., etc., post processors, and right here is tool database. If I double click there, it opens up the tool database folder, and I have all of these tool database files. The tool database that I'm using is this one right here. This tool database is the one that loads when I, over here in Aspire, click either the icon over here in the Toolpath tab or go through my Toolpath menu. You'll see Backups, Upload, Cloud. This is the tool database that I uploaded to the cloud when I modified it this morning. This file right here, vtdb.vectric, that is the default tool database that comes with the Vectric software when you first purchase the license. This is the database that ships with the software. It has none of your tools that you have added. It has nothing but what tools they have loaded by default. If you should ever have to scrap your database completely and start over from scratch, this is the database that you would import into your tool database. If you were going to back up your current database, you would look for tools.vtdb. That stands for Vectric Tool Database would copy it, so I'll right-click, copy, go down to my flash drive, and paste it right there. I have now backed up my tool database to a flash drive. I can unplug this flash drive, take it out, plug it into another computer running Aspire, and I would do the same thing. Load Aspire on that other computer, File, Open Application Data Folder, which would bring me to that folder on that computer. There will be a Tools VTDB file there. I would delete it, just highlight it like this, tap the Delete key on my keyboard. Then go into my thumb drive and copy that file into this folder. I would then close and restart Aspire, and this new database would be installed in Aspire. I use a flash drive that is dedicated to backups to keep an updated backup of my tool database here on site. 
if for some reason the internet goes out and I need to restore a database, I have a backup here on site. I also use the cloud to keep an updated copy stored off site so that I have more than one copy of my tool database stored in a safe location should the worst happen, my hard drive meltdown or something like that. I have this stored on site and off. Now, the one I got a lot of questions about was this section right here, materials. As you can see, I have several materials here in my list. One of the improvements Vectric made to cut 2D vCarve and Aspire was the ability to set up different profiles based on different materials that we cut commonly. If you cut several different types of materials, you know how much of a pain it can be to go back through each and every tool that you're going to use on that material and change feeds and speeds, change cut depths, etc. By allowing you to set up tools in different categories, you no longer have to do that. If you're going to be cutting hardwood, you can set up the database for hardwood with the speeds and feeds and pass depths that you commonly use for hardwood. If you need to add a new category or edit a category, again, that's easy to do with this icon right here, open the material management dialog. And I'll click on that. And right now, this has gone to hardwood because that's my default material. If I want to add a new database, I can come along and hit this plus symbol and that will create a new database for a new material. If I want to copy this material and all of the tools in it, I can use this icon right here. If I want to remove a material because I no longer cut that material, I can do so by using this trash can icon right here. So let's go ahead and create a new database. I'm going to create a new one and I'm going to call it Softwood because I do sometimes cut oh, pine, cedar, fir, things of that nature. And the feeds and speeds are different for those materials. So I'll click Apply and that has now created a new database for Softwood. I'll click OK to get out of that screen. And I'm now in my new Softwood material category. But if you look over here, the icon for all of these tools is grayed out. I've created the material, but I haven't added any tools to that database. So I'm going to start with the most basic tool I have, and that's the quarter inch end mill. I use that probably the most often of any tool I own. So I'll select my quarter inch end mill and it opens up this dialog here. It's the standard fare up in this area here. I have the end mill name, the tool type, the unit of measure, the diameter, and the number of flutes but none of the feeds and speeds are here because it doesn't know how you want to set that up. Now, I can copy the settings from this tool, meaning the quarter inch end mill, from any of my materials. Well, I'm going to copy the settings from hardwood and just adjust those. So I'll click copy. And now what it's done is it's imported all of these settings here, all the cutting parameters, feeds and speeds, and tool numbers from hardwood. Now, in cutting softwoods, a lot of the parameters are about the same. I tend to run for a quarter-inch end mill. I tend to run a pass depth 
of about half of the tool's diameter and a step over of about 40% of the tool's diameter. So those aren't going to change. What is going to change, however, is my feed rate. I find that I need to slow down for softwoods because if I try to run it too fast, it will tear the wood rather than just cut it. So I'm going to lower the feed rate to start and consequently lower my plunge rate. Then I'm going to click apply. And now, because I've entered this tool for this material, the icon for that tool is now activated. Now, you can spend time and go through and change all of these if you'd like. Personally, I prefer to add tools as they're needed. So, if I'm only going to cut out a 2D profile toolpath, or a pocket or drill, this is all I need for right now. It'll get the job done. I decide later on I'm going to V-carve. I can come down here and add my 90 degree V-bit or my 60 degree V-bit to this database when I need it. That's the way I tend to do it. You're free to choose any way you'd like. If you want to go through and select every tool you have, then that's fine. Go right ahead. Some tools we will tend not to use with certain materials. For instance, when it comes to acrylic, you're probably not going to use a form tool. So I have my form tools menu collapsed. Some of these tools I might use, diamond drag bit, maybe a tapered ball nose, so I leave them open. I'm probably not going to use my surfacing bits on acrylic, so I'll go ahead and collapse that down. Now getting back over to my softwood category, I'll probably use most of these bits with softwood eventually. But right now is not the time to go through and add all of these tools to the software category. So that's the way it's done to create a new category, a new material up here in the list, to add a tool to that material list is going through the open material management dialog and add tools to that material after you've created it. I'm going to go back up here to my hardwood category and we'll start down here on this row. And this is database and tool management. These are administrative tools here. Now, as I said before, I can add a tool using this icon. I can add an entire group. I can copy a tool. I can import a tool and I can export a tool. There are a couple of easy ways to add tools to your database. And I know I talked about this before in my previous videos, but I still get a lot of questions on it. So I'm going to go through it again. The easiest way of all is to download a tool database file from the manufacturer. That's not always possible because not all tool manufacturers have tool database files. And again, I have discussed this in my previous videos, and I'll put a link to that playlist down in the description of this video. If you don't have a tool database file, the second easiest way to add a tool is to find a tool with similar geometry that's a similar size, copy it, then change the, cutting, the geometry and cutting parameters. For example, if I wanted to add a 3 8 end mill here to my hardwood material list, 
the easiest way for me to do it is to copy this quarter inch end mill then change the geometry and cutting parameters of that end mill so I'll go ahead and do that now I have my quarter inch end mill selected I'll come down and I'll click copy selected tool now it added another quarter inch end mill here but you see that the icon is ghosted out that's because it now needs the settings the geometry and cutting parameter what I'll do is I'll make sure that I have the settings correct for the end mill but I want to copy it from the hardwood category I'll copy that tool now I need to start making my changes the first thing I need to change is the cutting diameter it's not quarter inch it's three-eighths of an inch I don't happen to remember what the uh, decimal equivalent of three-eighths of an inch is so I'll type in three slash eight then I'll tap the equal button on my keyboard and that changed the tool diameter and the title it does have two flutes and I don't know if you noticed or not but the minute I change the cutting diameter it changed the step over which is set still set at 40 percent it went to a hundred and fifty thousandths versus the one hundred thousandths of the quarter inch end mill so just by entering that diameter all of this criteria changed to include the name of the bit I'm gonna go ahead and leave these as they are I don't know how well this 3 8 of an inch bit is going to perform so I'll leave that past depth right there and I can make adjustments as I use it come down here I use a router not a spindle it is not controlled by any software but the slowest I can slow it down to is 12,500 rpm I don't want to enter that here I tend to keep that router set at 16,500 rpm so I've gone ahead and entered that here so my chip load is a little bit more accurate We'll come down here to the feed rate, and these numbers are for demonstration purposes only. I'm not suggesting this is what you should use for this bit. These are for demonstration purposes only. I'm going to change my feed rate to 100 inches per minute, and that'll result in a plunge rate of 50. And that gives me a chip load of three thousandths of an inch. I'll then click apply and that end mill has been added to the database and that icon is now active so I have added that bit by copying the bit above it then changing the geometry cutting parameters feeds and speeds it's now available for use that's the second easiest way to add a tool to the database is copy a tool with a similar diameter and a similar tool geometry now I'm the kind of person who likes to keep the tool database nice and tidy I don't personally own a 3 8 inch diameter end mill I added that for demonstration purposes I don't want to fill up my database with a bunch of tools I don't have so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this tool because it's worthless to me to have it and I don't want to clutter up my database any more than it already is so I'll just select the tool come down here to the trash can click it it's giving me the warning that it's going to remove one tool and will remove all of the cutting data defined for it are you sure you wish to delete it yes I am sure so I'll click yes and that 3 8 inch end mill is now gone so 
I have made a few modifications to my tool database. I need to go ahead and upload those modifications to my backup. So I'll click OK here. I'm going to close Aspire and I'll open it again. Create a new file. OK. I'll open the database. Now I want to go ahead and upload this database to the cloud so I have an updated copy on the cloud. So I'll come up here, click. This will overwrite the one I last uploaded. Yes, I wish to continue. And there we go. My new database, updated database, is now on the cloud. So the next time I go to my laptop and open Aspire on the laptop, I will open the tool database and I will download the latest tool database and install it on that session of Aspire. So I hope that answered everybody's question about adding a machine, adding a new material, and adding a new bit to the Vectric tool database. Again, a lot of these features were introduced in version 10 of the software. They are not available on version 9.5 and earlier. So, I hope you got something out of this video. And I'd like to remind you that today at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, I'll be hosting live Q&A session number 62, where we can discuss the tool database, adding a machine, adding a material, backing up your database, or anything else that I've talked about in this video. Again, that's this afternoon at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, right here on my YouTube channel. And I've put a link to that live Q&A session down in the description box of this video. Now, these live Q&A sessions are a great reason to go ahead and subscribe to my channel. And when you do click that red subscribe button down there, click that little bell right next to it. Then click it again and set that to all notification. Then you'll get a notification the next time I post a video and the next time I go live. So again, I hope to see you this afternoon. And as always, whether you subscribe to my channel or not, I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time to watch. And y'all take care.